In the city, there are unknown mutants in the form of animals. Attacks on peaceful residents occur frequently, and they must evacuate immediately to specialize safe zones. The government created the Mutant Counteraction Center with the goal of resisting dangerous creatures. The best fighters who managed to pass all the ruling selection stages were admitted. Dovin Lee is sitting in a car observing the events. He works as an agent, but he does not support the government's policy, as he believes that it promises too much while being unable to even protect its citizens. A frightened young man runs up to the brunette's car, asking for help. The protagonist refuses to help, and the next moment, the young man is destroyed by a mutant. He indicates that there is only one person he needs to protect. At that moment, he takes out his weapon and eliminates the beast, arguing that he needs to finish his job sooner and not keep his older brother waiting for too long. It turns out that the protagonist is the only agent in the mutant attack zone and his chances of winning against them are extremely slim. After several eliminations carried out by the guide, reinforcements are decided to be sent. Soon, Dovin Lee on the roof of a building spots his older brother Hammond Lee, who is walking down a ruined street with numerous bruises. He shouts to him from above, trying to get his attention. As soon as the two guys make eye contact, one of the mutant beasts attempts to attack the older brother from behind. Without thinking, the protagonist jumps from the roof and eliminates the terrifying beast, dealing it critical damage. Previously, Dovin Lee had asked his relative to stay home due to life-threatening conditions, but no one listened to his request. Now Hammond Lee, paralyzed with fear, grabs his close one's hand. Surprised by his rescue, the young man tightly hugs the protagonist, who is always ready to help his older brother. Leaning against his relative, Hammond bites him on the shoulder to drink some of his biological fluid. It turns out that the older brother is a creature resembling a vampire, feeding on plasma. Dovin is angry at his relative's insane behavior due to his own concerns for the latter's life. Once at home, the older brother continues what he started on the street and does not hear the special agent's questions at all. The agent says that mistakes must be accounted for, and that it is inappropriate to behave so rudely after everything that has happened. Soon, the brunette sees his relative's helplessness and forgives him, and leads him to a room where he wants to explain everything. Dogen says that he had prepared plasma bottles in advance to keep the guy at home and not put his life in danger. After a while, Hammond recovers and decides to explain that he did not intentionally disobey the protagonist earlier. However, at some point while watching the news on TV, he saw his younger brother in the execution of government regulation and became very worried for him. Succumbing to his emotions, he ran out of the house and everything that happened afterward he forgot. When Dovin asked about the bruises on his legs that needed treatment, Hammond admitted that he might have accidentally stepped into a puddle or stumbled, as he remembered almost nothing. For the opportunity to consume the protagonist's fluid, he pays by helping his younger brother gain pleasure, as only through his resources can he satisfy his hunger. Hammond begins to recover and understand what has happened only after the entire event is over. The hero wanted to know why he became special, and then the guy recalls his childhood. At a very young age, he was left in an orphanage, where he spent long, joyless years in a cold and different place. At the moment of coming to terms with his unhappy life, Hammond received hope for a change in his fate as he was taken in by a foster family. However, the joy did not last as long as he would have liked. On the first outing to nature with his new family, the brother felt a strange, intoxicating, and familiar scent that attracted him. He followed it without resistance, even though he knew it was abnormal. A random impulse led Hammond to kill a deer and consume his biological fluid. This temptation terrified the guy as he did not understand what was beginning to happen to him. At that moment, the hero hears his younger brother's voice calling him from behind. He thought that the parents and little Dogun were sound asleep, and now, after so many years of self-control, the ideal family might reject him. The guy realizes that it would have been better if everything that happened was a nightmare. Soon, he drives the protagonist away, desperately thinking about how good it would be to turn back time to prevent this from happening. The brunette stops the older brother's thoughts about the past, reminding him not to bite his lips to avoid leaving strong scars from sharp fangs. He tells him that he will do whatever it takes for his safety and well-being. At night, the older brother reflects on how if he were normal, the brunette wouldn't have to risk his life every day as a special agent. Dobin works day and night, only worsening his insomnia, but despite this, he always goes to bed next to Hammond. Looking at his younger brother, the relative realizes that he would never want to be a burden to that naive boy from the past. Deciding that this cannot continue forever, the guy asks Hammond to listen to Agent Lee, who worries about him every day and constantly asks him to leave his dangerous job. Hammond understands that he once used the protagonist recklessly without guilt or fear, but now he doesn't know what to do about it. The older brother decides to reach out to Dogen, but the latter immediately grabs his hand and turns away from him. 
The brunette tells his relative that he should stop tossing and turning in bed and get some sleep, as his restlessness prevents him from relaxing. Dovin also asks not to touch him, wondering what more the older brother could possibly need. Despite his irritation, the protagonist sees that Hammond is very agitated, which means he is hungry. He states that he will fall asleep right now and give his vampire brother the opportunity to feed, but the guy, as it turns out, is thinking about something completely different. The next morning, the news reports that many people have become victims of a monstrous attack in the center of Seoul. The government tried to reduce the losses but was unsuccessful, and the Mutant Counteraction Center has come under heavy criticism for its delay. Meanwhile, the authorities are set to investigate how the mutants escaped from a highly secured area. Hammond works in a cafe, a place he managed to get into with great difficulty, and now he needs to be very focused, but he can only think about the information he heard earlier about mutants that had not been encountered before. The guy apologizes to his young boss for being so absorbed in his thoughts. She is understanding and asks about his concerns regarding his younger brother's dangerous job. She says that she couldn't forget Dogen even if she wanted to, as on his first day of work, the younger brother asks not to overload the guy with work and was quite stern. The girl decides to update the employee and explains that Dogen Lee, according to the media, is an independent agent, which has led to many rumors about him. Upon hearing this, Hammond describes his relative as a very conscientious and honest person who achieved everything on his own despite various organizations' attempts to recruit him. However, the special center worker asks to have the older brother leave his side job as his personal job brings in enough money. Meanwhile, a fierce battle with mutants is ongoing and one of the strike teams is struggling with a large beast. Reinforcements are then sent and Dogen Lee arrives, asking the other team members to step back as he wishes to handle the problem himself. All team members are astonished by the protagonist's abilities, and thus start discussing the rumors that constantly circulate about him. Many think that the elite agent position was created specifically for Dogen, as only he can handle his job so professionally. As he examines the eliminated mutant, the brunette notices that the new mutation makes the beast even more dangerous. While figuring out what the new mutation might involve, Lee is poisoned by a toxin released by the beast. Dogen, as usual, meets his brother after work, showing him his concern and the new car, which was severely damaged in the last beast attack. Hammond decides to ask the protagonist if he plans to continue working as an agent at the Mutant Counteraction Center. The guy answers that yes, his answer hasn't changed. The relative doesn't understand why the man went to work there, as he had many job offers. Dogen explains that at that time, he didn't yet know what abilities he had. In any case, he will not abandon his work now. The younger brother decides to reveal that since childhood he has felt completely emotionless, but Hammond was the only one who could evoke positive feelings in him. Once in his childhood, Dogen brought a certificate from school and decided to show it to the guy first. He saw joy on the older brother's face, who praised him for every even minor achievement. Returning to the conversation about work, the brunette explains that he must eliminate all mutants, but he thinks to himself that his only goal is to save his older brother no matter what. When the two arrive home, Dovin decides to check his relative's condition. He wants to know if the older brother is currently feeling hungry. Hammond admits that he is not, as he had just eaten. Despite this, the special agent understands that the guy must be hungry. Dogen sits him on his lap and removes the bandage from his neck, revealing a healed bite. Every time, Hammond cannot come to terms with his fate as a vampire, as he feels cursed in such moments. The protagonist asks if he has ever tried consuming someone else's fluid, but Hammond replies that only his younger brother's plasma is perfectly compatible with his tastes and can quench even a strong thirst. The older brother says that drinking from a bottle is much more convenient than from the shoulder, as it causes less discomfort and doesn't stain clothes. Hammond again thinks about the past when the younger brother saw him as a vampire for the first time. He didn't want anyone to know about it, especially the person he loves the most. Little Dobin was scared for the guy and asked him to quickly get himself together to return to the camp with their parents. The boy asked the relative if he might have just been hungry and didn't eat enough during dinner, even though there was still food left in the camp. Dovan accepted the hero as he was without question, even if it might have frightened him. Suddenly, Hammond asked the man if he remembers what happened that night. It was at that moment that the older brother finally felt accepted by someone despite the mutation that made him need to quench such thirst. During the consumption of the so-called food in the form of the protagonist's plasma, Hammond needed to relax, so Dogen helped him by providing pleasure with his hands. The older brother was very embarrassed, as he had not known the name of such a process before and was astonished that it was happening to him. While taking a shower, the relative reflects on the protagonist's fate. As if he were not personally responsible for caring for him, he could live his life as he wished and even date someone without worry. These thoughts make Hammond panic as he doesn't want the brunette to hate him for this. As the thirst intensified, the guy makes pleasure and pain, unable to quench his needs on his own. 
Hammond thinks that if he could have overcome his weakness from the beginning, both would have had the chance to live as they originally wanted, and their bond would be purely that of brothers. Dogen had been helping his brother all this time because he understood that his brother couldn't solve his problems on his own. He went into the shower with Hammond, offering him quite ambiguous assistance. For the older one, it was still something very strange and awkward. Hammond decides to take a bath alone. At that moment, he wonders whether Dogun is really okay with everything happening between them. At this time, a dark-haired man bursts into the room, takes the young man's hand and sits in the bath with him. Dogun starts the conversation by expressing his dislike for Hammond's side job, which he agreed to. He is concerned about his relative's physical condition, considering that he recently almost lost consciousness during a shift. The young man denies his poor condition, saying that such things could happen at other times too. At this moment, the younger brother suggests that the older one quench his thirst, arguing that there is no better opportunity for such an activity. Hammond notes that the plasma of the main character has an amazing taste. Unlike anything he's had before, at this moment, he finally stops feeling embarrassed. After finishing his business, the older one notices something strange behind him. Dovin points out this detail to the young man and asks him to stay to help resolve the situation. The older brother is embarrassed in front of the younger one, as he has never done anything like this before. Agent Lee changes his mind and asks his relative to do only what he says. He suggests that Hammond get a bit closer at that moment. In this personal moment, the dark-haired man doesn't take his eyes off his close person. After some time, Hammond goes to bed, but he cannot do so without a family member. Dogen, meanwhile, finds liquid dripping from the drain and is overcome with a sense of foreboding, as if all the troubling thoughts are growing stronger. Suddenly, his thoughts are interrupted by a call from the counteraction center. The DNA test results of the plasma are ready. The material dripping from the drain turned out to belong to mutants who were eliminated near the agent's house. The counteraction center explains that animals with secondary DNA mutations are now called neo-mutants. The main character is summoned to the ministry headquarters. The next morning, the dark-haired man leaves for work, leaving the older brother at home asleep, while apologizing for not being able to give him a ride to work. Hammond, traveling to the coffee shop on his own, suddenly feels weak. At some point, he feels very ill and experiences hallucinations. Elite Agent Lee arrives at headquarters, where he is reprimanded for being late and labeled as rude and disrespectful. He is told that the appearance of Neomutants has led to abnormal behavior in existing mutants, so Dogen is assigned the task of collecting bodies of various mutants, both familiar and new, and then delivering them to the elders. Before leaving headquarters, Lee visits his old acquaintance and mentor Jay, and a dialogue takes place that is not very pleasant for the hero. He is informed that a report concerning the older brother is awaited, as this person is aware of Hammond's thirst for plasma. Dogen notes that his interlocutor is worse than anyone else in the government because he is aware of the Lee family's private life. Three years have passed since the agent joined the Archon team, the Mutant Counteraction Center, which is a federal agency. However, for some reason, the state shows no interest in their affairs. It seems that someone else is in charge of this place. The power likely belongs to someone known as Jay, a person who is unquestioningly followed by the Council of Elders. According to Lee's information, the headquarters is entirely under his control. She promises to ensure the complete safety of Dovin's older brother. This makes the elite agent anxious as only he should know Hammond's secret. After leaving headquarters, the special center agent Lee ponders the compromising information Jay has gathered about his relative as he doesn't understand why Jay promises to protect him. Dogen decides to continue keeping close contact with him until he devises a plan for elimination, as the older brother should belong only to him. The cafe manager notices her employee's tardiness and decides to reprimand him, but the conversation is interrupted by loud noises from outside. At that moment, a mutant bursts into the establishment, starting to destroy everything around. Hammond ducks behind the bar and sees a small boy next to him who is frightened by the chaos. The guy explains that mutants are blind but have very sharp hearing. The employee calms the child and asks him to be silent, as they need to reach the emergency exit quickly. Since an alarm has been declared due to the invasion, security agents should soon arrive to rescue the civilians. At this moment, Hammond accidentally injures his hand on a shard of glass and the beast, sensing the scent of plasma, charges at them. At a critically dangerous moment, a gunshot rings out at the mutant. Dogen manages to arrive at the scene and eliminate the beast, saving his relative and the small boy. Agent Lee grabs his older brother by the arm and says that now the guy will have to work hard to explain what happened. Back at home, the cafe worker explains that he couldn't escape because he was saving the little boy. Its answer doesn't satisfy the protagonist, and he begins to get angry. Dogen Lee says that he allowed his brother to take on the side job, fully aware of the level of danger, because he was confident he would always be able to come to the rescue. 
Now the agent thinks differently because Hammond appears to him as a defenseless and reckless young man who might worsen an already terribly complicated situation with spontaneous actions. Dovin asks his older brother if he dreams of running away from home or if he has perhaps found someone special. This question makes Hammond feel despair, so he proves to his younger brother that he has no one to meet. However, this answer doesn't please the agent and jealousy begins to intensify. After a few hours, the guy lies in his bed and ponders whether he would ever dare to run away from home or leave the protagonist alone. Dobin has forbidden Hammond from going outside, as well as from visiting the side job he liked. The older brother meekly complies with all the conditions but begins to feel that Agent Lee is spending too much time at work and avoiding him. Hammond's thoughts turn to whether the man might despise the very idea of spending time together. However, despite the lack of their meetings, the brunette is always nearby. The older brother became Dovin's only living relative after their parents died, and what had bound them since childhood had long been destroyed. His thoughts are interrupted by a phone call from the cafe manager, who is worried about the employee after the recent mutant invasion incident. Previously, a man had called her and reported that his brother would no longer work there. While on assignment, Dovin recalls the last conversation with his older brother. He realizes that Hammond will never understand how deeply the brunette cares about his life and how much he is actually hiding. The next morning, the younger brother did not return home from work despite having promised his relative he would. Hammond waited for Dogen at home as usual, but that day strange things began happening, as they did on all subsequent days. The hero began finding the bodies of mutants with clean fur neatly arranged near their house. The most accurate description he could give was that it seemed like an offering for some purpose. At first, the guy suspected it was a coincidence or a series of unfortunate events, but after a week, his opinion changed. It became impossible to deal with it all on his own, and they didn't want to make Dogen anxious that he needed to come up with a plan before his return. One day, a passerby on the street suspected Hammond of being a carrier of a non-existent mutant virus, having seen fresh wounds that quickly healed in fangs. After this incident, he received several threats from strangers who promised to report him to the counteraction center. Remembering this, the guy begins to think that the large number of animal bodies is connected to someone seeking revenge on him. He tries to recall where he might have revealed his true nature, and who might have suspected him of carrying a non-existent virus. At this moment, Hammond feels unwell, and stress triggers auditory hallucinations. A hero believes that the deterioration in his condition is likely due to hunger and a depleted supply of plasma, the consumption of which has significantly increased recently. Hammond is left with only one question. Why did he become the carrier of such a terrible disease? The older brother decided to go outside, fearing that Dogen would find out, as he had recently strictly forbidden him from doing so. With each day spent alone, the guy feels increasing anxiety. However, if he steps outside for just a short time, nothing should happen. While contemplating his walk, the hero suddenly feels unwell and hears an unbearably loud buzz in his head. If the sound was repeated outside, then it wasn't just imagination. Yet for some reason, no one else seems to hear it. Hammond decides to return home as what is happening frightens him greatly and causes severe physical pain. Despite this, he also feels as if his body is moving on its own at some signal. Turning into an alley, the guy sees a kitten sitting on the road. At one moment, the animal transforms into a huge mutant and asks him to drink fresh plasma and enjoy its taste. Meanwhile, a passerby notices Hammond leaning over a sewer cover. He offers his help and says he can call the police. The hero snaps back to reality, trying to convince himself that it was a genuine hallucination but now, it is not only auditory, but also visual. Soon, he notices that people are gathering around the sewer cover, steam of red color is coming out, and incomprehensible words call into something are being heard. Hammond decides to get a little closer to see what is happening, but at that moment, the mutant drags the stranger inside. After a moment, liquid bursts from the sewer, left over from the person, all the bystanders are confused as their faces turn maroon. Everything at that moment seems unreal to the guy, he cannot hear people's voices and everything around him blurs. Suddenly, Dogen grabs Hammond by the shoulder and says that they will see each other again. Turning around, he notices that no one is behind him. The older brother returns home in confusion, as he clearly heard the brunette's voice and felt his touch. Once at home, the protagonist's relative washes off the consequences of going outside and realizes that he is experiencing agony comparable only to the old times when he could not quench his thirst for a long time. The guy understands that he is feeling physical tension, particularly in his lower abdomen, and he feels helpless against his own body. The hero doesn't want Dogen to see him in this state. He decides to help himself but finds his efforts unsuccessful. The older brother is experiencing intense suffering, so painful that it is hard to even take a breath, and his whole body begins to tremble. In his desperation, Hammond starts calling out for his relative, hoping that he will hear his pleas. 
To the hero's surprise, the agent immediately enters the room, not to help, but to scold. He has learned that the older brother has run away from home despite having previously instructed him to take care of himself. At this moment, the guy completely loses his composure and collapses onto the floor in convulsions. The agent recalls that something similar happened before, when Hammond would lock himself in a room and refuse to come out even briefly, only to return a few days later, suffering from headaches. Despite his frustration with the situation, Dobin helps his older brother complete what he started and says that he doesn't even realize his recklessness in such moments with a clouded mind. The younger brother notices that, in playing with his relative, he is starting to lose control and awareness of what is happening. Punishing his older brother for disobedience, the brunette tries to find out why Hammond broke the rules and left the house. In his actions, Dovin is determined to see it through to the end, even if it forces the brothers to reach a new level of relationship. The agent observes that the close person cannot reject what is happening because he wholly belongs to him. Hammond is embarrassed by Dovin's actions but cannot hide his feelings and therefore confesses his love to the brunette. And terrifiedly thinks that Dovin had only ever helped him partially before and had never shown interest in anything more, Perhaps they should not rush things. However, the younger brother does not stop and asks the guy to relax, so that they both can get what they want. Hammond feels he is starting to lose his mind due to an excess of feelings during solitude. At the same time, he feels his craving for plasma. The older brother notices that the more he consumes the resource, the stronger his appetite becomes. Dovin gives full freedom of action, but at that moment, Hammond suddenly changes his mind and says that his relative is behaving too recklessly. The agent continues to act even more diligently, so that his brother will finally admit what he is truly feeling, as only the protagonist is capable of dealing with a young man. At some point, Agent Lee bites the defenseless guy on the neck and personally quells his thirst with plasma. This surprises Hammond greatly. Since Dovin also has fangs, it turns out that the brothers now resemble each other even more. Three days have passed since then, but Hammond is still tormented by nightmares where the protagonist appears as something very terrifying and frightening. He cannot recall a single word spoken during the process, and the visions of that night seem very strange and unimaginable, as if it could not have happened. Unconsciously, the older brother has begun to ignore his younger sibling and pretend that nothing happened between them, however, Dogen behaves as usual. Hammond noticed that he did not feel hunger after that night, although normally three days without plasma were very difficult for him. When they accidentally run into each other in the apartment, the guy cannot find the words to answer the brunette's question about his condition. He is constantly haunted by what happened, and it prevents him from focusing even on communication. Dogen is bewildered and angry, due to his excessive aloofness. The incident that happened a few days ago on a busy street in Seoul is being covered on television. It is reported that after a thorough examination of samples from the scene, various types of DNA, including mutants, were found. As the problems related to the disorder worsen, some organizations have decided to protest in the city center. Interrupting the monotone voice of the news anchor, the special agent decides to talk to his brother, asking about his wounds and general condition after that night. Dogun says he applied a lot of medicinal ointment to him. The only thing him inquired about was work, but the brunette replied that he had taken a day off. After this brief conversation, they sat in complete silence, and the older brother immersed himself in thoughts about how every time he goes outside, something horrifying happens. Hammond begins to think that he is the source of all problems and misfortunes. After their parents passed away, the brother tried to hold on because of Dogen, who was still just a child at that time. He stayed strong only because the little boy was always on his side, but what will happen if, after all these years, he decides to leave him? Heaven thinks that he must be cautious with his words and actions, as he is afraid of being alone again. His heavy thoughts on this are interrupted by Dogen's question about the guy's thirst. He suggests completely eliminating unnecessary tactile interactions and keeping only bottles as a method of plasma intake. After some time, the man installed a surveillance camera at home, and the older brother cannot object to this. After all, he feels utterly useless, causing many problems and always making others anxious. Recalling the past, Hammond realizes how recklessly he behaved. The guy realizes that his very existence causes Dobin a lot of trouble, and perhaps that is why his parents locked him alone in a room during childhood. Hammond begins to think that even the fact of his birth was a mistake from the beginning, and that he has no chance of living a happy life. The brother again delves into memories and wants to find the family album where the warmest and dearest photographs were kept. The younger brother was there every day, and when the older brother read him a book in the evenings, he himself forgot all his worries. Hammond feels a great responsibility for everything that has ever happened in his life. The hero wishes he could be in a world where all his loved ones are alive and happy. However, instead, he feels a sense of despair as his entire life depends only on Dovin's desire to stay with him. The guy decides to talk to his younger brother and explain that last time he was too engrossed in his own thoughts and couldn't respond properly. 
Once all misunderstandings between them are resolved, in Hammond's opinion, everything will return to how it was. Unexpectedly, Agent Dogun appears in the hallway, deciding to start the conversation first and explains that his consent to everything that happened then was unconscious. It was just an attempt to help. The protagonist says that there is no need to feel awkward around him as nothing special happened then. The younger brother also asks to pretend that the events of that night never actually occurred. Hammond agrees to the new terms. Mentally, the hero tries to justify what happened earlier as a matter of circumstance, but in reality, he is very disturbed even by the conversation that took place. Therefore, the guy promises himself that such an incident will never happen between them again. Steven, the older brother, recalls that night when his younger brother found him consuming a wild beast. He curses the temptation that led him to commit such a horrifying act. At some point, his memory distorts the events, and instead of the eliminated deer, he sees his relative, suddenly, it becomes clear that anyone who is near him will be doomed. The vision turns out to be a nightmare, and Hammond wakes up in a cold sweat, looking at the other half of the bed and not finding the brunette. For a moment, he thinks he may have unconsciously eliminated Agent Lee, but then consciousness slowly returns, and the guy considers that he has probably just gone to work. The hallucinations still don't stop, and the hero loses the ability to distinguish reality from the nightmarish scenarios suggested by his mind. Hammond does not realize his current state. Suddenly, someone grabs him by the arm and sharply brings him to his senses. 